So what this window is showing us is, um, the first thing to notice is we've got a method box at the top here. We've got two different methods of doing HDRs, and we've got the Details Enhancer and the Tone Compressor. And in the case of what Jolene's done, she used the Tone Compressor, um, which is going to apply a single tone mapping to the entire image. So, in fact, all Jolene did was just drag the brightness up just a touch, and, um, and what Jolene's aiming for here is this really dramatic sort of orangey, um, it almost looks like an explosion, it's kind of a, um, there's a light inside the clouds there, and I, I think this looks particularly wonderful once it's applied to the, uh, the Ophelia's mother image. So um, I'm going to just sort of stop there at, at that point for Jolene's image and show you a different image to show you how some of these HDRs might normally work. But uh, for Jolene's image, this is this is what she's chosen. She's chosen these three images, HDR them together, and then applied a tone mapping um, using the tone compressor with just a brightness of plus two. So we'll click apply on that. Now, as we can see, the, um, the tone mapping has been applied, and we've got our final image here, which um, has got this wonderful toning to it. It's got this wonderful orangey light inside the clouds feeling to it. And once we've got that, we can say File, Save As, and then we'll just give it an image. So let's call it Volcanic Cloud in Hawaii um, HDR Final. And we'll save that. Give it a second just to finish saving. And now that we've got that, we can take that image over into Photoshop and make some final changes on it before we merge it into the Ophelia's mother image. However, before we do that, let's take a quick look at another HDR image that we can use the Detail Enhancer on. So, once again, going into the HDR menu, I'm going to choose Generate. And this time when I browse, I'm going to go into John's Example folder. And I'm just going to choose the last three images in that folder that I happen to know are... Um, uh, of a pictures, some pictures I took out in, our, in my back garden. I was looking for some example shots to use for the uh, for demonstrating this. Okay, and because these images were taken on a tripod, I'm going to definitely want to align those source images, make sure that they register nicely. And also there's some moving fish in this shot, so I'm going to attempt to reduce those ghosting artifacts, which is going to try and spot it places in the image where stuff has moved. So I'm going to press OK on that, and it's going to start converting those raw files for me. I've done no processing at all on these images, so these are just literally as they came out of the camera. Um, what I was trying to achieve with the particular pictures I've taken here was just a, um, an outdoor scene that had got something under shade, so it was going to be sort of darker than uh, uh, than I'd like in the final shot, and some just outdoor daylight. So I've got um, a sort of a a little covered bit at the side of our house alongside the pond, and that has got um, some fairly deep shadow in the in the top of the. Uh, uh, the covered bit and obviously we've got daylight outside that so this was a good example of a kind of situation where you might want to take uh, an HDR and uh, in this case I took three separate photographs each at um, two stops difference which is a pretty good way to start um, with an HDR if you're taking HDR shots um, and, you've, and you've got maybe a bracketing function on your camera make sure that you're using um, a fixed aperture so that your depth of field doesn't change try and leave your focal point in the same place as well of course because that will mess things up if the focal point's different um, and then just change the shutter speed on the shots um, and get uh, at least three um, uh, with a spacing of anywhere between one and two stops two stops is a pretty good place to start um, uh, in between them and obviously you want to be looking at the scene with eyes that are aware of what you're going to be coming out with at the end you want to be aware of where the brightest parts of the scene are and where the dimmest parts of the scene are and you want to make sure that the brightest photo you take is exposing well for the dimmest parts and the darkest photo you take of course is exposing well for the brightest parts so uh, keep all of that in mind and uh, as long as you've got shots that are within two stops of each other you ought to be able to put them together as a nice HDR. Now this is the version of the image that has uh, has been produced as the HDR and like before um, it doesn't look great at this stage because it's a 32-bit image trying to be displayed on an 8-bit monitor so what we can do once again is just scroll over it and you can see in the background what looks like a very overexposed fence in the background there. You can see in the little viewer in the top right there is good detail there and it's nicely exposed it's fine uh, and when we come to tone map this it's going to look just great so once again over here we've got some uh, uh, some garden furniture which is white and it's in uh, relatively bright light so that's that's got good detail but in the picture it looks uh, uh, overexposed and then up in the top of the you can see this is the covered bit at the side of the house that I was talking about um, it's a sort of wooden structure um, 
if I point up into the dark area, you can see we have got detail in there now. It's it's looking grainy and dark, and it's not a lot of detail in there, but that's fine. That's what I want. I, I don't want it to be um, completely devoid of detail, but I don't want it to be looking very bright. Otherwise, um, you know, it, the daylight is not as bright as the light up in there. It shouldn't be. And so in the image, it ought to look dark as well. But I don't want to... Um, I don't want to completely go to black with it. I don't want it to clip. So um, so we've got good detail throughout. So the next thing, once again, we're going to hit the HDR button. And we're going to choose tone mapping. So I'll click that. Okay, and as before, we're bringing up the tone mapping window here, which at the top has got the method for details enhancer or tone compressor. Now, I'm just going to make sure we've got the default settings on these, because I've been messing around a bit with uh, with teaching myself. So down at the bottom of the window, there's a little bit of window you can't see off the bottom here, by the way. Um, once again, my I recorded 800 by 600, and this window's just a little bit taller than that. But there isn't much you're missing off the bottom there. There's uh, some buttons for setting saving settings, and there's also buttons for viewing the preview here at different sizes. Um, a word of warning, Photomatics is very memory intensive, so unless you've got an absolute load of memory in your computer, you probably do want to stick with the smallest of the previews, and this is the smallest preview that you're seeing here, so it's more than possible to work at this size. So. Um, um, we're going to go with the detail enhancer for this particular image um, and I'll just quickly switch back and forth between the two and show you um, what the tone compressor is going to do is it's going to take all of the data in that 32-bit image and it's going to apply some sort of algorithm to the entire image so every bit of the image is going to have the same algorithm applied to it and it's going to compress the tones in that 32-bit image down to an 8-bit image so you see we've got an output depth here, an 8-bit or 16-bit image both of which will display nicely on your monitor and of course be something that you can work on in Photoshop um, so uh, you're going to be, in this case we're going to compress down to an 8-bit image which is which is fine because this is just um, experimentation but um, we've got some sliders in the tone compressor here, let's just drag the the brightness up and that will brighten it as you might expect but what it's actually doing is it's taking uh, it's, it's telling us which part of the 32-bit histogram 32-bit per channel histogram we want to work on so um, I'm going to say that dragging that up we want to work on the bit that, that's going to be sort of slightly further down so we're brightening it up and then our tonal range is saying how wide uh, a section of that 32 bit histogram we want to work on. So if you say, right, I want to um, drag that all the way up there, we're going to go for the darkest tones in the 32 bit histogram. And then if I drag the tonal range right up, I want to choose as many tones as I possibly can. So I want a really wide range of tones. And then the next slider down is going to tell us how much we want to compress or, un or not compress those tones. So let's just drag these down to a more sensible value. So let's just put our contrast adaptation back to zero. And then with our brightness at zero and our tonal range at zero, let's just drag the brightness up until we're getting a good... We see we've got a histogram here. We're going to get a good range of brightness values on our histogram. And then I'm going to just widen that up just a little bit so we're getting some more tones in. OK, that's, that's probably a little bit much. I'm just looking at the preview here. Now, the preview on the tone compressor is is pretty accurate. Uh, when it comes to looking at the preview on the details enhancer, uh, it's just a, a sort of an in indicative view. It's The detail enhancer takes quite a lot of processing power to run, so the preview is not an exactly accurate representation. But here it's pretty good. So uh, I'm going to leave my brightness and my, and my tonal range around about those figures I'm looking for something that looks sort of faintly realistic but I don't want to get too many values because if we try and compress too wide a range of tonal ranges into um, a, an 8-bit image or a 16-bit image what we'll end up doing is uh, munging all of our of our interesting detail and particularly on this willow tree and then the plants in the foreground here there's a lot of detail but it will all go into a very small number of values and it'll all go very grey and it will lose all that detail it'll stop me looking so um, so interesting and it will stop looking realistic so it's a balance between um, getting as many tones as possible in and getting um, good detail a realistic and um, and pleasing image um, so there's the balance to be struck there um, and the brightness tells us as I say which bit of the um, the source data we want to use and then I'm going to just say right if I drag this contrast adaptation up watch what it does to the histogram if I if I drag this upwards it's going to squeeze the histogram more towards the middle so if I drag it up 
You see how everything sort of squeezed more towards the middle? And if I drag it back down to zero, it flattens it out and pushes it more out to the sides. If I drag it down again, it flattens it and pushes it more out to the sides again, and more out to the sides again, and more out to the sides again. So what we're doing is we're taking a very wide range of tonal values um, determined by our brightness and tonal range, and we're squidging them down into an 8-bit um, uh, an 8-bit output image. Um, so contrast adaptation of minus 10 is, is not squeezing our tones at all, really. Not very much, anyway. So what we're doing is we're just selectively choosing which of the tones we want out of the source image. Um, if we drag the contrast adaptation up, we're squeezing the tones quite a bit more, which means we can get more of those source tones from the source image into our final image. So that's pretty much the, the way the tone compressor works. Let's quickly look at the details enhancer. Now, this is a local contrast um, enhancement algorithm. Um, this is called different things in different, uh, in different programs. But basically, what this is going to do is instead of applying a single tone mapping to the entire image, it's going to apply different tone mappings to different parts of the image. So what we're seeing is, let's just uh, drag our sliders down to put the strength down to absolutely zero and uh, the luminosity is going to let us choose which parts of the image we want this, it's going to be a bit tricky to uh, actually let's do this on the tone compressor here we go um, so I'm going to choose zero compression there and I'm going to grab as much of the tonal range as I can so now we can see I mean it's, it's not pleasing but it tells us where the bright parts of the image are we can see that there's a very bright part of the image here looking down this pathway here and the, and the uh, the fence at the back and we've got some bright parts at the top of the tree here and we've got a bright part particularly on the um, the garden furniture there and obviously it also tells us where the darker parts are which are up in the uh, the tip of this roof here so that's just telling us roughly what the shape of the image is and uh, I'm going to press the details enhancer again and go back here go back to our default settings and we can see that in the in the peak of this rooftop here now look we've got good detail here now uh, and we've also got good detail here on the tree, which is one of the brightest parts, and we've got good detail here on the uh, fence, which is one of the brightest parts. So what it's doing is it's, it's doing a different tone mapping for this part of the image uh, where it was very dark uh, to this part of the image where it was very bright. And so this is how you end up with um, some of those really strange-looking HDR images where you've got maybe halos and things like that all over them, and they look really weird. Um, what's happening is that the person that's applied it has allowed the algorithm to go absolutely crazy and just level everything out completely. Um, so you end up with um, bright parts that, that are not bright, they're mid-grey, and dark parts that are not dark, they're mid-grey, and uh, you just end up with halos around everything and it looks really strange. So that is something to be aware of while you're, while you're messing with these settings. Um, in this case, what's happening is, if I drag the slider up and down, you can see that that is varying the strength of this this algorithm that is that is lightening the dark areas and darkening the light areas or in fact not actually lightening or darkening but choosing different parts of the 32-bit source uh, HDR image um, so for the brighter parts it's choosing the brighter parts of the source image and for the darker parts it's choosing the darker parts of the source image and um, and then we've got, obviously, a color saturation slider, which does pretty much exactly what you'd expect. Now, the bit of the algorithm that determines um, how, uh, how to do these haloing areas, how to choose what parts are bright and what parts are dark, um, in this program are chosen by the light smoothing. Now, if I put that right down to zero, you can see massive halos all around things. And what we're doing is we're saying we want you to be really, really tightly selective by, by location um, about what is considered uh, light or dark. You know, our, the radius on our, um, on our search algorithm is very small. Um, if I drag this up, you'll see that it starts to smooth out and smooth out and you can still see halos if you if you just look uh, if I go back back one step or maybe two steps you can see halos up the side of the the pillar here um, and if you watch down the, the path here um, there's a halo starts to become visible around the middle point so there's a light line there and it starts to go slightly darker here um, and as we drag up it just looks a little bit more realistic and um, this is one of those situations where when it changes, all of a sudden it looks wrong for a second. You need to look away, take a moment, and then look back and decide whether or not you think what, what you're seeing is pleasing. Um, up on the highest setting of all, uh, we're almost back to um, 
uh, something that looks completely realistic. But you need to be a little bit careful here because if you don't let the algorithm be at least mildly selective about what is light and what is dark, then it's going to uh, munge everything. Once again, like I said, on the tone compressor, you're going to get all your details are going to be compressed into a very small range of values and it will start to look very grey and it'll start to look very unrealistic um, in a different way. So it won't be halos that make it look unrealistic. It'll it'll be uh, that uh, maybe this tree, for example, the detail in this tree will all, all be within a very small range of values. So the darkest parts won't be much darker than the lightest parts. And that looks really wrong as well. So there's, a, a, once again, a balance to be struck between... Um, Letting the letting the algorithm do its job and choosing what's bright and what's dark, and letting the uh, and compressing the tones in a way that uh, gets you more more tonal values in. So, um, in this case, I happen to know that this particular image works extremely well with just the default values. So, um, I'm going to. Um, just hit the default button. I will also just mention the luminosity slider here. Um, now. I believe that what this does, and uh, I'm not the software author here, uh, it says controls the compression of the tonal range affecting the global luminosity level. And I believe what it's doing is this is so helping us select what tonal values in the source image we're going to work on. Um, so if we drag that up, we're choosing the dimmer tones and therefore um, brightening the whole image up. So um, this is best use, the reason they've called it luminosity I guess is that in actual fact what you what you end up using it for is to brighten or darken the image um, but I think uh, what it's actually doing is, is, is a little bit more subtle and clever than that, I think it's helping us to choose what tones to use uh, Right, I'm going to stop there because uh, I've talked a lot about HDRs here and uh, I've not, you'll notice have I've not touched on any of these sliders down here at the bottom. Um, I could go on for hours and hours and hours talking about all of the sliders in here. Um, I think the, the top sliders here are the main ones to understand when it comes to figuring out how the algorithm is affecting your image, and that will give you much more control when it comes to deciding what you want out of this system for the image that you're trying to produce. So I'm going to press... Uh, I'm on the defaults. So I've just dragged the luminosity down. Minus one. That's all I've done to this. And I'm just going to press uh, apply on that. And as you can see, once the um, algorithm has applied, we've got the final version here. And once again, we can do a file save as if we choose to. Um, in this case, I'm not going to because this is just an example. But um, if I just do view full size, so we're going to full size um, and we can see all the detail in the image. We can see that the detail in this tree, and this is one of the things that was that was at risk if I didn't get these settings right, is looking pretty realistic. That's, you know, the darkest parts of that detail are, are nicely separated from the lightest parts. And if I drag across to the peak of the roof here, we've got reasonable detail in this darkest part of the image here, and we've got reasonable details in this brightest part of the image here. So not a high art image, but it nicely demonstrates what an HDR can do for you. And as you can see, although this is one of the brightest parts and this is one of the darkest parts, the transition between the two is it's pretty smooth. It's done a lovely job of separating the two out and not making it obvious that they've come from very different photographs, these two different bits of the, of the image. So that's a pretty good job. <laughs> Photo Walkthrough is a free online video show about photography and digital photo editing using Photoshop and Lightroom. Join the Photo Walkthrough community, find all the old shows, and subscribe to the new ones for free at photowalkthrough.com. <laughs>